I, I wondered, but wait a minute, why, why aren't there shadows? Because there were rocks around and trees and so on, just like our beach. And he, his response was, well, the light that you see is the light of God. And the light of God ca covers every single um, every single surface. So there was no light beaming this way and there's a shadow this way. The light of God covers everything. Hi, everyone. My name is Debbie Ali. My NDE occurred as a result of being abducted for two weeks. This happened in 2006. And uh, my life before that experience was pretty, pretty simple, pretty normal. Uh, an everyday life, you know, work, taking care of my kids who were very young at the time. Um, regular motherly and wifely duties, running errands. And um, I was brought up very much in the church, the Presbyterian church. It was a very sheltered life, essentially. And uh, to be abducted and placed in very horrific conditions and be treated uh, essentially like a package and an animal um, was something very foreign to me. Uh, um, I've always been a very, I've been a, always been a very conservative individual. I always dressed conservatively. I conducted myself in a certain manner, and there I was on my birthday, no less, uh, taken from inside of my home. Uh, my house was robbed. I, they threw me in the back seat of a vehicle. Um, the first day, which was my birthday itself. I spent that entire day and night in some sort of dumping ground. In, it was a massive hole in the ground filled with garbage and, you know, old appliances and stuff like that. Because of how badly beaten I was and the sex, uh, my, almost every square inch of my body was in pain. And as I dozed off, the pain started dissipating. And at the time, I thought nothing of it, except I remained fully conscious. So in, my, in the back of my subconscious, I was like, okay, how, I'm falling asleep, but why am I, why do I feel like I'm awake? At the same time, it was, it was a very disconcerting feeling. And in the blink of an eye, I was above my body. So I'm like totally confused. I'm like, okay, so... It's me. I know it's me because I, I still had all of my memories um, with my kids, my husband, before all of that. All of my memories were intact. I was still Debbie. But here I was above Debbie. So it was very confusing to me. And so I, I have to say floated down. So I went down to my body and I looked and there's a you know, that's me. That's the mask on my head. That's the duct tape over the mask. These are the handcuffs. I'm looking at the little bed I was on. I looked around the room. I saw the refrigerator. I saw the couch. Uh, the You know, I saw that the room was not ventilated. I, you know, I saw everything. And I questioned, how can I be here? And how could I be there at the same time? It does not equate. And then it occurred to me, oh my I'm dead. Could I be dead? And uh, I went back down. I looked at my chest, my physical chest, and it was not moving. There was no movement as though I was breathing. And I was like, oh, crap, I'm dead. I am dead. Uh, the, oddly enough, though, no pain, no sorrow, no real uh, negative emotion that you can think of. Just, just a little bit in shock. And to, to, to the, just to the side of me, there was this brilliant white light, like nothing I've ever seen and nothing that I will ever see until I return home. That's what I call home. And the, bright, the light gradually grew in size and in spectrum, and it was 
oh my gosh, it's like holding a candle to the sun or holding a yellow crayon to the sun. Unimaginably bright white light, not yellow light, white light. And, and I was able to look at the light and not need to squint or shade my eyes or anything like that. I looked straight into the light and out of it stepped Jesus. Because I had been calling his name from the time the gun was at my head, I had been calling Jesus' name and praying nonstop. He stepped out of the light and I tried to look at his face but I felt like I was not worthy. And so I dropped to his feet. And I could discern uh, the shape of his foot. And at first, I, the, the glow, there was a glow coming out, you know, beaming out of his feet. And I thought to myself, okay, it, it, it must be shoes or sandals. And, and when I looked closer, I realized that he was bare feet. Hence the name of my book, Bare Feet. And the light was emanating from him. And he picked me up. I swear, no sorrow, no physical pain, no emotional pain, no mental anguish, nothing. No regrets. No, uh, no, oh my God, who is this and where am I going? No questions. Just total, absolute, complete peace. So he scooped me up just like he would uh, a, a newborn baby, just like that. And somehow I fit in his arms as an adult. And he told me that I could rest and I should sleep. And he kind of he snuggled me and he, he cuddled me on his bosom. And I swear it was the sweetest, most peaceful, restful sleep I've ever had and ever will have. And when I awoke, I was on the beaches of heaven. How did I know that? It was telepathically relayed to me. So there was no need for speech. It was all telepathy. I would think it, he would respond and, and vice versa. And uh, he told me you're in heaven. These are the beaches of heaven. You're safe, you're good. And I was just like a little newborn baby, you know, with my head over his shoulder. And I was just marveling at everything it's like, like a kid in Disneyland or a kid in Legoland or something, just marveling. Everything was like Earth times 4.0 or 10.0. The greens were greener. The sand was crystal sand. The, the, the colors of the water, I can never replicate that blue. I cannot find that shade of blue. I Believe me, I've tried. I've spent years could never find colors that match what I saw. And I looked at the water and there was life in the water, fish, whatever you have. They were all alive and swimming in the water, but the water was very still. So it confused me a little bit like, okay, so how can the fish be moving and the water is at a dead stop? There were no ripples or waves. And Jesus told me, telepathic, telepathic, using telepathy again, that in his presence, everything must stand still. And I just, I was just, I was in such awe of what was taking place. There was no sky, no clouds. There was light. There was no nighttime. There was no, there were no stars, and all of this he, he, he began teaching me, and I I wondered, but wait a minute, why, why aren't there shadows? Because there were rocks around and trees and so on, just like our beach. And he, his response was, well, the light that you see is the light of God, and the light of God co covers every single, um, every single surface. So there was no light beaming this way and there's a shadow this way. The light of God covers everything. So there, there could not even exist a shadow. You see, even the leaves on the trees, because I started looking at the leaves on the trees and was like, okay, so this leaf is bent this way and there's no shadow underneath. There's just light emanating from everything. 
and there was a very very gentle breeze that was blowing on the beach and I thought wow that's refreshing I've never had I've never smelt uh, uh, the, the air from the beach like that before and his response again was that's because it's not the beach air that is the breath of God that keeps everything alive and again just total total awe uh, the rest of my experience was, you know, moving along, walking along the beach, marveling at the grains of sand. And I swear I could have stayed there for all eternity. Just marveling at the sand, just the sand. I had no desire to remember anything from this world or go back to anything in this world until it suddenly dawned on me. Oh, my gosh, my kid. My son was eight. My daughter was six. And I was like. I need to take care of them. But I, I think I think as much as I would love to stay, I think I need to go back. And he was like, his response was, why do you need to go back? Do you not trust me to take care of them? And that's when I let go and I surrendered. I surrendered my family to, that, to, to God. And I think it's because I did that, that I was given the second chance. Um, we continued walking, and at the end of the beach, at the end of the shoreline, there was an even more brilliant white light that emanated at the top of a, a, a mountain or plateau. Indescribable. Cannot be replicated. And from that light was became a voice. And again, I'm supposed to be a writer, but I cannot begin to describe the sound of that voice. But it was, it was the voice of God, and, and the voice said to me, my voice, he, he understood what I was questioning in my mind, and he said, my voice is the sweetest and softest thing you will ever hear. But for those who do not belong to me, it will be the worst sound that they ever hear. And then he proceeded to grant me permission to, go, to come back to earth if I desired, and I said yes. But I needed to get this book done. And he showed me the cover of the book. He gave me the title, what would be included, etc. I got all of the details. And I thanked him. And Jesus blessed me. He placed his hand right on my head and he blessed me and smiled. Most beautiful smile ever. And uh, he walked me back. But as we were walking back the direction from which we came, for some reason, as hard as I tried, I could not look back. I, I could only look forward. And we got to a certain point where um, he stopped. He hugged me. He kissed me. He blessed me. And at that point, I knew, okay, whatever diseases my body has, whatever illnesses or in infirmities, it would now be gone. I knew that. I just knew. And... When he left me, he took two steps back and he completely disappeared, but he left me in the company of the saints from the Bible and Mother Mary. And I suddenly grew very tired again, very sleepy, very tired. And I thought, okay, I'll just lay down for a little nap. And I lay down on the sand, soft as, oh, can't even describe. And I curled up in a fetal position like a newborn baby, I was in a fetal position and the saints all, you know, lay their hands on me and around me and they were praying. And this is where I remembered the journey back to my body. My journey back, I moved with the speed of thought. I moved with no obstacles, no inhibitions, no congestion, as if to say, you know, there are others, you know, um, souls around or anything like that. If I had thought, okay, I'd like to visit France right now, I would have been there like that. Or I'd like to see what um, some of these other planets look like. All I needed to do was think and I would have been there. 
But I didn't think that. I was reveling in the freedom of not being in this body. It was so uplifting. It, I was a light. I was healthy. I was pain-free. I was free of illness. And it's like uh, I was moving through space and time at once. And I remember twirling. And if you think of a, um, a seal or a penguin, the way that they swim on the water, how, how agile and how in control they are of their space and, the, and whatever exists within their space. That's the way it was, except it was not, I was not in a body of water. I was in space, the space between the spaces. And I could stop. I was able to stop at any juncture I wished. But I didn't want to stop. I just wanted to float and dive and delve and twirl and swirl and free my arms and and float as though, you know, float like this as though I was floating on water and it was exhilarating. And I did that for some time and eventually I ended up back in my human body. And I remember, I distinctly remember that gasp, that first breath, like, and immediately all of the pain, all of the pain, the nausea, the headaches, the everything, everything came back because I was back in my body. But I remembered very, very vividly, I remembered every single out-of-body experience I had. I remember the room that I was being held captive in. I remembered everything. But at that point in time, I was a completely different individual. The Debbie Ali after that was the Debbie that knew beyond the shadow of a doubt, somehow, some way, I no clue at the time I had, I had no clue, I was going to be free. And I would be back with my babies in a fairly short space of time. And I was going to live. And when my keeper, the doctor that came back, he was, well, what's with you? Because I was smiling. And I like, Nothing. I just remembered something. But in my heart of hearts, I knew what had happened. And uh, just as I said, the following night, for whatever reason, it has never been heard of in the history of abduction. Um, because like I said, we were not wealthy people. My husband managed to raise maybe one-tenth of what the ransom money that they were requesting. One tenth. And still, they accepted it. They kept me alive for this long to accept one tenth of the ransom. It made no sense to the police. But they accepted it. The drop-off went fairly smoothly. And before I knew it, the keeper came back in and he said, it worked. You are going home to your children. You're going home to your husband. And I just smiled because I knew. I just knew. I knew when this happened, everything was gone. So my death experience was nothing short of awesome. Fantastical. Any synonym you can think of. That's what it was. And people on this earth are so afraid of dying. Death is not something to be feared. It is something to be welcomed, at least by individuals who know they've led a pretty good life, a moral life, a decent life. So me, I welcome death. I'm like, I can't, I literally cannot wait to get back home. Yes, I'm here in my house with my children, everything. This isn't home to me. This is not home. I dream of where I was. And I yearn to go back there because that's home. This world in which we live, 
it's not even a shadow of what really exists, of what is real. This is not real. This is like a camping ground, a testing ground to see if we can, uh, you know, uh, if we can live up to our potential, see if we can overcome the obstacles that lie here on earth. This is a testing ground to see if we are worthy to be in the presence of God. That's all this is. It's a very short ride. If we call, we have a special power that's given to us by God himself. If we call upon him to intercede for our children, our husbands, our family, there is a special punch that goes with that prayer. And women, we as women, we need to, we must take advantage of that. It's like God has given you a gift and it's all neatly wrapped. And he says, if you need help, uh, you know, open the gift and there's going to be a magic something in there and I'll answer your prayer. But we hold the gift and we look at it and we're in trouble and we're scared for our children and we're scared for everyone because of what's happening in the world. And we look at the gift but we don't open it. All we need to do is speak and ask. And those are the words of God and his message to people everywhere um, as well as the story. So um, again, my name is Debbie Ali. I also do counseling. Feel free to reach out if you feel that you need to. I deal with uh, individuals who have suffered any type of abuse, um, sexual assault, trauma, PTSD, anxiety, depression, because I live with them all. I deal with suicide attempts, all of it. Um, Bare Feet, my book, can be found on Amazon. Bare Feet by Debbie Ali. And uh, there you can read in more detail what happened and, of course, the wonderful, wonderful ending of it, um, of that story. Mind you, and please keep this in mind, the battle continues.